In this guide, we will build a simple authentication system using Python, Streamlit, and Supabase. The application will allow users to sign up and log in with an email verification step required before they can access the system. Supabase will handle user authentication and database management, while Streamlit will provide a user-friendly interface for interacting with the app. By the end of this walkthrough, you will have a fully functional authentication system where users can create an account, verify their email, and securely log in. You can support us and get early access to our daily videos by joining the channel. We'd love to have you as part of our community. Let's get started. Before we start coding, we need to set up a virtual environment. A virtual environment helps keep our project dependencies isolated, ensuring that the packages we install do not interfere with other projects on our system. This makes our development process more organized and prevents compatibility issues. To create a virtual environment, we use the Python command that initializes a new environment named venv. Once the environment is created, it needs to be activated. On Windows, this is done by running the activation script inside the scripts folder. After activation, any package installed will be contained within this environment, keeping our global Python installation clean. Next, we install the necessary dependencies. The first package we need is Streamlit, which will be used to build the user interface of our application. After that, we install Supabase, which will handle authentication and database management. Finally, we install the Python Doton V package, which allows us to manage environment variables securely. With these dependencies installed, we are ready to start building our authentication system. Next, we need to create a .env file, which will store our Supabase credentials. This file is important because it allows us to keep sensitive information, such as API keys and database URLs, separate from our main code. By doing this, we prevent accidentally exposing our credentials in public repositories and make it easier to manage configuration settings. To get the required credentials, we first go to the Supabase website and log into our account. I've added the link to the Supabase website in the video description. If we do not have an account yet, we need to create one. Once logged in, we navigate to the Data API section where we can find our project's Supabase URL and public API key. These values need to be copied and stored securely in the .n file. Inside the .n file, we define two variables, Supabase URL and Supabase key. The Supabase URL will store the API endpoint of our project, and the Supabase key will be used for authentication when connecting to the database. By keeping these credentials in an environment file, we ensure they remain secure and are not hard-coded into our application. Now that we have our environment set up and Supabase credentials stored, we can start coding. And we begin by creating a new file called app.py, which will contain our authentication system. At the beginning of the script, we import the necessary modules. The streamlit module is used to create the user interface, while Supabase provides the functions needed to communicate with the authentication system. We also import dotenv to load environment variables from the .n file, and os to access these variables. After that, we call the load .n function to make sure the environment variables are loaded into our script. Then, we retrieve the Supabase URL and Supabase key values from the environment and use them to create a Supabase client. Next, we define the signup function, which takes an email and password as input and attempts to register a new user using Supabase authentication. If the registration is successful, it returns the user object. Otherwise, it displays an error message. Similarly, the sign in function allows users to log in by providing their email and password. It interacts with Supabase authentication and upon success returns the user details. If there is an issue, it displays an error message. The sign out function is responsible for logging out the user. It calls the sign out method from Supabase and clears the session state to remove the stored user email. The st.rerun function ensures that the app reloads properly after logging out. The main app function defines the welcome screen for authenticated users. It displays a greeting message and includes a logout button that, when clicked, calls the sign out function. The auth screen function is responsible for displaying the login and sign up interface. 
it first shows a title and a drop-down menu that lets the user choose between logging in or signing up. Below this, input fields for email and password are provided. If the user selects Sign Up and clicks the Register button, the Sign Up function is executed. If the registration is successful, a success message is displayed. If the user selects Login and clicks the Login button, the Sign In function is executed. Upon successful login, the user's email is stored in the session state, a welcome message is displayed, and the app reloads to update the interface. At the bottom of the script, we check if a user email exists in the session state. If the user is already logged in, the main app function is displayed, showing the welcome screen. Otherwise, the authentication screen is shown, allowing the user to log in or register. This ensures a seamless experience where users only see the appropriate screen based on their authentication status. Before our authentication system can work properly, we need to ensure that authentication is enabled in our SupaBase project. To do this, we navigate to the authentication section in the SupaBase dashboard. Here, we manage how users can sign in and register for our application. Within the authentication settings, we look for the sign in, sign up options. SupaBase supports multiple authentication methods, including email, phone, and third party providers like Google or GitHub. For our project, we need to make sure that the email option is enabled. By default, this setting might not be active, so we need to switch it to enabled mode. Once this setting is updated, our application will be able to register users and allow them to log in using their email and password. With authentication properly configured, we can now test our application and ensure that users can sign up, receive verification emails, and log in successfully. To do this, we run the command to start the Streamlit web server from the terminal. This command initializes the application, allowing us to access it through a web browser. Once the server is running, Streamlit will provide a local URL, typically a2 slash localhost dash at 8501, where we can interact with our authentication interface. If everything is configured correctly, we should see the login and sign up options on the screen. Since we have both login and sign up options in our application, let's start by creating a new account. To do this, we need an email address, but instead of using a personal one, we can generate a temporary email. For this, we'll use a temporary email service, and I'll leave the link in the video description for easy access. Once we have our temporary email, we copy it and use it in the registration form on our web application. We enter the email, choose a simple password, and click the Register button. At this point, our application sends a request to Supabase to create a new user. However, before we can log in, there's one more step, email confirmation. If we try to log in immediately after registering, we'll see an error. This happens because Supabase requires email verification before allowing sign-ins. To fix this, we go back to the temporary email service, check the inbox, and find the confirmation email sent by Supabase. By clicking the confirmation link inside the email, we verify the account successfully. Now that our email is verified, we return to our web application and log in using the same credentials. This time, the authentication is successful and we are redirected to the main page where we see a welcome message. At this point, our authentication system is working as expected, allowing users to register, verify their accounts, and log in securely. When we are logged in, we have the option to log out. To do this, we simply click the Log Out button on the main page. When clicked, the application will call the Sign Out function, which will log us out, clear our session, and redirect us back to the authentication screen. This ensures that users can securely exit the application whenever they choose. Uh, and that's how we set up a complete authentication system using Supabase and Streamlit. Uh, we covered user registration, email verification, login, and logout, all integrated smoothly. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more Python and Streamlit content. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.